Is becoming a CISSP still worth it? Is this still the flagship certification for cybersecurity professionals looking to elevate their career? Hi friends, I'm Venetia. Welcome or welcome back. And in today's video, we will be discussing everything you need to know around the CISSP certification. And by the end of this video, you will know if it's worth taking the certification for you or not, and what some of the things are that you should look out for, and what some of the benefits are that you can gain from taking this certification. All right, so straight off, CISSP is the Certified Information system security professional certification by ISC squared. ISC squared is a very well-known industry um, certification and exam governing body and provider and their certifications and credentials within the cybersecurity industry is commonly highly recognized amongst employers globally. So let's start with what is required for you to take the CISSP certification. Firstly, it is not a beginner level certification. You definitely require experience to obtain the credential um, and the experience includes um, more than five years of experience in any two of the eight domains covered within the CISSP certification. Now, you can write the exam prior to having the five years experience. Now, in this way, you'll become an ISSP associate and not necessarily a CISSP. The credential will only be awarded once you are able to prove your experience in the industry. Okay, the CISSP covers eight domains ranging from security risk management, identity and access, secure software development, communication and networking, um, engineering, security operations, etc. In all of those eight domains, it covers each domain to a deep extent and it is, it is a theoretical certification, meaning that you can learn all the content. There's not really any hands-on or practice, etc. But it is a combination of strategy, governance, technical knowledge, etc., that is required in order to obtain this certification. And those are some of the concepts that you will learn while going through the CISSB certification journey. Some of the jobs that typically require the CISSB certification can range actually from the top job in terms of a um, CISO, Certified Information Security Officer job, Director of Security, security architect, even senior level security analysts, information security managers, um, senior level security engineers. A lot of these roles actually require CISSB or prefer CISSB as one of the certifications of choice. Now, there are a few reasons why you would typically want to look into doing your CISSP, either once you get into the industry or if you have some experience in another field of work, you might want to do the CISSP certification in order to pivot into cybersecurity. And there's a number of reasons why. Firstly, it provides strong, strong foundational skill sets for cybersecurity and foundational knowledge. It provides an overview of every domain covered within cybersecurity at length. The content of this exam and certification and what you have to learn and the, the knowledge that you have to consume during the studying process is really, really extensive. And thus it provides a significant level of data to you and knowledge that you will learn throughout this journey. And so that's why it's really extensive and it's really helpful for someone that might have business experience or you might have experience in um, working experience in another industry and you want to get into cybersecurity, then you might not have to start from some of the entry-level certifications, but you can actually start to go through um, the CISSP content and learn about cybersecurity through reviewing some of the CISSP content. 
The CISSP is also good for career advancement, further career development, and elevating roles within cybersecurity, as well as elevating your salary. Um, and I will share more towards the end of the video on how it's helped me to elevate my career and to really, really enhance my salary and to be able to negotiate for different um, salary brackets just by taking the CISSP certification. Okay, now in terms of the study process of CISSP, so I used a combination when I was taking the certification. Firstly, I took the certification when I had already been in the industry for a number of years, I believe about four years of security engineering. And at that stage, um, I decided to pursue the CISSP certification. And even at that stage, with a, a few years behind me in the industry and having done many different things in the security operations and engineering space, the exam was brutal. This certification was brutal. The amount of content to consume and learn was significant. It really takes time. It is extensive. For me personally, I took about six weeks of studying for the CISSB. Now that was not studying only. I studied while working a full-time job. So I studied after hours a lot, in the morning hours a lot, and on weekends a lot. I pretty much had no life when I was doing the preparation for my CISSP exam um, for the six weeks that I was dedicated and focused on preparing for the exam. So give yourself enough time, go through the exam outline, which you can find for free available on the ISC squared website, which I will list in the description box below. Go through the exam outline, check the official um, study guide and give yourself enough time, plan for it, depending on how much experience you have in the industry already and what other certifications you have done you can typically uh, gauge by that how much time you would need to prepare for this certification but definitely give yourself enough time to have enough time to go through all of the content and then do some practice exams prior to the exam okay so the study content that i used was, was a combination of i used the cybex official study guide i used training videos on Cyberary by an amazing trainer on there. Her name, I believe is Kelly Handerhan. And she does the official CISSP training course on Cyberary and it helped me tremendously. It was probably the best decision I made to go through that training material. It was all self-study for me. I didn't go for any course or for any classroom-based training, etc. I just, I studied the study guide and I went through the training material on Cyberary. And then um, about a week to two weeks before the exam, I went through the 11th hour study guide. And like I said, all the resources I used will be mentioned down in the description box below. So you can just check it out over there. Then for exam question preparations, I actually used um, on my iPad, I downloaded the Cybex official exam questions app and I used that app to write official practice tests and then to go through the questions and look over the um, domains that I was not very comfortable and confident with and then I could go over and over and, uh, them again. If you don't know, one of my main things when studying for tech certifications is to do practice questions because if you do those practice questions, you can actually gauge the terminology used within the exam, the structure that the questions are posed into, and it can really help you get your mind into a good headspace for the exam. So I would highly recommend that you not only study and watch training materials, but you actually do practice exams prior to taking your certification exam because it really helps 
a time. Okay, then in terms of sitting for the exam. So in order to take the exam, I had to take it at a Pearson View testing center and I had 250 questions in the exam and I had six hours to complete the exam. Now, for me, I did the exam in one single sitting. I didn't get up for anything. I didn't go to the bathroom, nothing. I went into the testing center and I did the exam in one single setting. I completed the exam in, I believe it was about four hours and 50 minutes or so. Um, that's how long it took me. And I must tell you, it was, I think up until this day, the worst exam that I've ever taken. It was so brutal. It was so hard for me to be able to sit there for that many hours and focus and concentrate and try to read through everything. I am a very hands-on techie kind of person so going through all of that information was really really just draining for me but um, it was worth it. So for me my experience in the exam from about the fifth question of the exam of the 250 questions when I got to number five and I had 245 more to go, I thought I was failing throughout the entire exam. I sat there and I read through the questions and I flagged a bunch and I reviewed, put a bunch into review, but throughout the entire process, I honestly felt like I was failing every step of the way. Um, and so this is a good point that I want to note is that if you're sitting in an exam and even though you're discouraged and you're losing hope, just trust yourself and trust the process and trust the fact that you have learned you're in a pressure situation at that moment but perhaps what you've learned it's just better to trust the knowledge that you have gained and make the best instinctive and knowledge-based decision and so I don't give up I continued reading the questions and then answering what I thought was the best answer and at the end of that session, when I walked out there, um, they printed the page and I was so afraid to look at what was on the paper. And when I turned the paper around, it was almost like my heart jumped out of my chest because it said, congratulations, you had passed the exam. And so I had passed the exam first time around. I didn't have to do the exam again. Um, thank goodness. But it was a really, really hard and tough experience. And like that is the, the most honest that I can be. Um, anybody that tells you that CISSP was not as hard for them, kudos to them. You know, maybe they understood the concepts better or they, you know, ingest information better. But for me, it was really, really hard. And so make sure that you are prepared and make sure that when you're doing practice questions that you are getting like above 80% or so for the practice questions. And if you are doing those practice exams, make sure that you do one or two of the exams where you do an actual full six hour session with 250 questions because that's what I thought had also, I, I hadn't, I, I did one, I believe, where I did a full practice session of six hours and I was totally fatigued after that session. And so in the exam, it helped a lot that I did that one session, but I would have definitely done more um, if I had known that the exam was so, so tough and that those six hours were so draining. Um, but nonetheless, that was my exam experience. I did pass the exam the first time around um, and those were all the resources that I used. All right, so in terms of the credential, I, I have a few mentors in the industry and I was able to be endorsed for the credential straight away because um, I had already done the required amount of experience in various domains of cybersecurity. And so I was able to get my endorsement and I was able to get my actual um, certification and my CISSP membership in the following weeks that followed from there. I am still an ISC Squared member. I still maintain my CISSP credential. 
Now, in terms of the credential maintenance, you do need to um, collect CPE points. It's 120 points over a three year cycle. And there is a membership fee that you have to pay in order to maintain your industry credential. And the CPE points is just, um, they're making sure that you're keeping up with continuous education. And so those points, when you attend webinars and when you attend training, etc., you pull that into this ISC squared portal and you then get awarded those CPE points, which makes sure that you maintain your certification and that it's you remain certified basically. Okay, then I think finally, okay, is the certification worth it? And is it worth it to go through this journey? And if you haven't gathered it yet throughout this video, that answer for me personally is definitely yes. The CISSP for me personally really elevated my career like I could have never imagined. Prior to taking the CISSP certifications, yes, I was good at what I did. And in addition to learning all the things that I learned throughout the certification process, I was just much higher regarded by employers now that I had taken that certification. And especially if your hiring manager or people employing you have also taken the certification, they know the amount of work that is required to be able to obtain that credential. And so therefore they have that level of mutual respect, mutual acknowledgement that there's, that this person actually you know, uh, sacrificed a lot to gain the certification and they learned a lot and they have to know enough about cybersecurity in order to obtain the credential. And so that's very important. So the employer recognition is very important. But in addition to that, salaries generally are higher for people with a CISSP credential. This might vary from location to location based on where you are, but what I have found um, where I am in South Africa, the salary brackets are really higher for people with good industry credentials and well-recognized industry credentials. And at the time of getting my CISSP, when I went to the next job, I actually was able to bump up my salary by about 35 to 40%. So, and that was all due to the fact that the only thing I changed in my portfolio and in my resume was the fact that I had obtained my CISSP credential. And I was also considered for much more advanced level roles, which helped um, in that perspective as well. All right, friends, I think that is it with regards to my CISSP journey. I am really interested to know if you are on the journey to obtaining your CISSP certification. Let me know in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, please remember to give it a like. And if you like this content, remember to subscribe to my channel. Catch you next time.